Thank you very much for joining in everybody. My name is Corp. I am a full-time artist, so I colour in for a living. It's a great job to have. Um, one of the things I like to do though is I like to teach other people how to draw uh, as well. Um, and we're going to draw some, do some drawings with marker pens today. So the way the session's going to go is we're going to do some art drills first. Now art drills, don't panic about that. It's not as scary as it sounds. It's just a bit of a warm-up exercise. No star jumps involved. It's just going to be a warm-up exercise for your fingers. So we'll do that first and then we're going to start drawing our character uh, together as well. Now all my lessons are step by step so don't worry if you can't draw just follow what I do one line at a time and we'll get there towards the end. Anybody that is a bit more creative feel free to kind of you know stretch your legs a little bit and uh, you know take some risks with your artwork as well. OK, um, this is all. The reason we're drawing this is uh, because these pieces of artwork are going to be projected on the side of Tamworth Castle for Christmas. So make sure you put in your best effort when you're drawing this so that uh, when it does get projected really big on the side of the castle, it looks excellent. OK, so I've already done two lessons with other other schools. So I want to show you what they've drawn or what I drew with them first because those tutorials, those full length draw drawing tutorials are available on the New Urban Era and the and My Corporate Industries Facebook pages. Okay, so if you wanna have a go at drawing some of these other characters, you can do that as well. Okay, it'll be very similar to what we're doing now. So let me show you what the other uh, classes or the other uh, schools have drawn. We started on Monday where we draw drew the Nutcracker um, Soldier which I really like. We knocked a tooth out because he'd been cracking nuts. So we've done that one because we do, we're drawing characters from the Nutcracker Ballet. We also were on yesterday, we did uh, the Mouse King. So again, available this full length. It's a one hour drawing tutorial. It's available on my Facebook page. Go and have a little look at it if you fancy having a go at that one as well. But there's the Mouse King. So now I can reveal to you what you guys are gonna be drawing. Uh, Florentine's got Florentine India's got the hands up. Hope you're okay. If there's any problems, just uh, unmute yourself if you need. If you've got a question to ask, it might just be that it's still up there from earlier on. That's okay. Uh, let me reveal to you though what uh, you guys are going to be drawing today. We're going to draw another character from the Nutcracker Ballet, and we're going to draw Clara. She's the main character from the Nutcracker Ballet. So we're going to draw this, and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you step by step how to get this picture done okay now first things first though we're going to do a little bit of art drills art drills are just a little bit of a warm-up exercise for your fingers just to get you uh, get you ready for our drawings so what you're going to need for this section is a sheet of paper put it portrait orientation that means upright also you'll need your marker pen so go and grab your marker pen I'm using sharpie but any kind of black felt tip pen will do. I like going it straight in with felt tip pens rather than pencils. I don't try to use pencils too much. Uh, pens are much more fun. Okay, and what's going to happen is I'm going to draw a line on here. You're going to copy it. We're going to draw the same line four times and get loads of different things from it. Okay, first line we're going to draw across the top of our page. Big bouncy line. Wants to be at least seven bounces seven bounces all the way across there if you've done more than seven you're probably drawing a bit too small so draw a bit bigger it's much easier to draw bigger if you've drawn less than seven you're probably being a little bit too efficient for it okay once you've got that line in we're going to draw that bouncy line again this time we're going to draw it upside down and inside this bouncy line like this have a little go at that for me now the important thing here is if you get it wrong, don't panic, just keep on plowing through, even if it looks like a bit of a mess, just keep on plowing through and it'll be fine. Let's just close off the ends here. Let's just curl that bit around there. And this side, let's curl that bit around there. Now, once you've done that, just with two bouncy lines, that is how I draw worms, intestines, brains, all those kind of things. So you've got that now in the locker. Let's try a bouncy line again, but this time let's try it in a circle. A nice easy one to get you started off with. Could be a daisy, could be a cloud. A bouncy line in a circle. Let's make it a little bit more complicated though for this next one. We're going to draw a bouncy line in a circle 
but we're going to draw it inside out this time, okay? So this is what it's going to look like. Still the same line. A bouncy line in a circle, inside out. Give that one a go. How did you get on with that one? A little bit more complicated. Like I say, don't panic. If you get it wrong, just keep on trying. I'd rather you had loads of ink going all in the wrong way on your sheet of paper than a blank sheet of paper. You're not going to get anywhere with a blank sheet of paper. If you've got loads of ink on there, at least you're moving forward and at least you're giving it a go. So you can see from that, we just did a bouncy line four times, but we've got loads of different things. We've got the worm up the top, we've got the flower or the daisy or the uh, cloud over on this side. This side looks like an explosion or it could be a hole in the paper. There's all sorts of things you can do just with that one bouncy line, okay? So great stuff. Let's try another line. My second favorite line to draw is called the spring line. It looks like this. It's like a never ending lowercase e. So try and draw that one for me. It's like a never ending lowercase e all the way across the page, nice and big. Remember, don't, if you do it too small, you're going to be there for ages. We're going to draw big. It's much easier to draw big today. We're going to try and draw that line again, that spring line again. This time we're going to turn it upside down. So have a look at that one. Already it should be messing with your brain a little bit because your brain's going to be thinking, I can't do that, even though we've just drawn it that way around. Obviously bonus points for anybody that's turned their piece of paper upside down to do that. That's clever stuff. You find all your shortcuts. Okay, let's make it a little bit more complicated, shall we? We're now gonna go with a spring line in a circle. It's going to look a little bit like this daisy. I'll show you how it's going to look first. Spring line in a circle. Now, as we're doing this one, what you want to be concentrating on is having a seamless join. So you can't tell where you stopped and where you started. So everything joins in. So as soon as you get close to finishing, you want to be aiming to join it all up together nicely. There you go. Have a look at that one. Again, don't panic if you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, just laugh it off. How do you get on with that one? Now, every now and then somebody goes and does the next level, which we're gonna go and do in here. Everyone, every now and then somebody does that one instead of this one. This is the most complicated one. So just have a little look, make sure you've definitely got this version of it. If you've done the more complicated one, well done to you. But we now are gonna go with the absolute, somebody called this a tongue twister for your fingers, this next one. So see if you can do this one. We're going to do a spring line in a circle, but we're going to do it inside out. Anybody want to have a go with before I start? No? I don't blame you. This is what it's going to look like. A spring line in a circle, inside out. And again, you're looking for a seamless join. So you can't tell where you started and finished that piece of artwork. How are we doing? That's drills. That's drills done. So I want you to do me one more favour. If cameras could go on, that would be great. If the, if we don't want the cameras on, that's fine. But I want you guys to do me one more favour. Now, I believe art is a team sport. You can learn loads by drawing with other people. Um, uh, you can get more inspired by what other people are doing. So what I want you to do now is just hold up your artwork. Hold up your drills so I can have a little look at them. Not only so I can look at it, but what I want you to do, whilst you're holding yours up, just have a little look at everybody else's. See what see what everybody else has done. Some people have absolutely nailed it, got it just right. Awesome stuff. I can see some people have crossed it out if they got it wrong. That's fantastic. Love that stuff. Excellent. Nice work, you guys. Mr. Hudson's class, top marks. Yeah, look at that. Awesome stuff. Well done. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Now... This, you know we're going to file this? Everybody ready to file this away? Let's file it away. Find your nearest bin. And get it in the nearest bin. We don't need that piece. Let's move on. Thank you very much, Mr. Hudson, for showing us that. That was great to see those pieces of artwork. Uh, let's get on, though, with our, our actual drawing. Did everybody, everybody got rid of theirs? There's always somebody that don't want to screw theirs up. But let's get rid of it. Art's just temporary. Don't, take, don't be too precious about it. 
Okay, grab yourself another sheet of paper. One more sheet of paper. This time we are going to use a pencil for this bit. Really important as well for this one because our character is quite tall. Really important that we have the, uh, the paper in portrait orientation. That means upright so it's taller. Same as the way mine is so that we can fit this whole character in. If you do it the other way around we're going to have a real short fat character which wouldn't be a bad thing. It just means it's going to be more difficult to draw that way around. Okay. Right, are you ready then? I'm going to put some pencil lines in. These pencil lines are going to help us with drawing our character. So we're not going to do too many. It's just to help keep us in the right areas. I'm going to go quite dark with my pencil lines so that you can see them. But I want you to go quite light with your pencil lines so that when we put the ink lines on afterwards, they don't become too obvious or they're easy to rub out. OK, so just do your pencil lines so that you can see them. First thing we're going to do is uh, one big tall rectangle. This is going to be the entire width of the character and the entire height of the character. Now the rectangle at the top, you want to leave a little bit of space because we are going to have a little tiny bit of hair just growing out at the top there. Other than that, let's do a big rectangle all the way across like that. Nice and big. You can go a little bit wider with this character, it won't make too much difference. You could go a little tiny bit thinner, but don't, don't forget the, the smaller you go, the more difficult it is to draw to get these uh, lines in. So try and go fairly big with it. Okay, we've got our rectangle in. Next line, our character is going to be pretty much symmetrical. So uh, to help us with that symmetry, we're going to draw a line going all the way through the middle. like that right through the middle of that rectangle everybody got that in next thing to do is the head shape now I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for a circle kind of head shape but what we want to do is make sure there you go. we just got one more class joining so I'm just gonna hang on for a second while they connect <clears throat> Hi, Mrs. Stevens. You haven't missed much. Hello. Hi, everyone. You haven't missed much. We've done art drills. So we did a little warm-up exercise. We're now drawing our main character. We are going to draw Clara from the Nutcracker Ballet. That's what we're going to draw today. I need you guys to get back up to speed with everybody else, if that's at all possible. So you'll need an, a sheet of A4 paper. Have it upright. Draw this shape. Uh, in there so one big rectangle and a line going through the middle as soon as you can get to that point that would be great okay everybody else are we ready to carry on i'm going to take it a little bit slower just so that mrs stevens class can catch up a little bit next thing we're going to do so we were talking about the head up the top here yeah let's go and put the head shape in now i'm going to do a circle you can do an oval you can change the shape a little bit not too much though but i'm going to go and put a big circle in here doesn't have to be a perfect circle it can be a little bit wonky so don't worry about it main thing is make sure that it hits the edges of that rectangle we want it to be big enough because we've got lots we've got lots of stuff to put in there we've got a whole face to put in that head so make sure you've got enough space by putting it in as big as possible there it is that's how big it needs to be so make sure that circle is touching the sides i know it's not quite touching the side over there but you know mistakes happen Right, once you've got that in, let's go and put a line. We're going to leave a little space. So that's the head. We're going to leave a little tiny little space there for the neck. And then let's draw a line across. Again, you can leave a slightly bigger space. It just means this character is going to have a longer neck. I wouldn't go too long with it. It might look a bit weird if we've got a real long neck all the way down to there. Not that there's anything wrong with looking weird. That would look quite cool, actually. We've got that in. So that's the shoulder line across there, yeah? That's the shoulder line. Now, next line we're going to do is going to separate the body from the legs. So somewhere across here, somewhere across there, it doesn't really matter where, we're going to put another line across. I'm going to go straight in the middle. Just there, another line across. So now we've got up the top here, we've got the head area. 
in the middle we've got the body and the arm area and down the bottom here we've got the leg area four more pencil lines <laughs> four more pencil lines and then we can get rid of these pencils just want to make sure everybody's uh, catching up so it might feel a bit slow but this bit is really important to get it just right i'm going to zoom in now I'm going to zoom into the bottom part of uh, the character so that very bottom rectangle yeah what we're going to do now is we're going to put in some guidelines for legs so on this side i want us to put in two lines For one of the legs again you can go fatter you can go thinner don't go too thin though because it'd be difficult to get the lines in but two lines over that side for the legs over on the other side we're going to do the same kind of thing two lines one there one there for the legs and again, you know, don't worry about making it perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as your best friends. Artwork is all about doing something differently to everybody else. If you've done something that nobody else has done, then you're pretty much winning with artwork. So try and be as individual as possible. So it doesn't matter if these le these legs are slightly wonky. If one's fatter than the other, it's no biggie. Okay. Everybody got those pencil lines in. Let me see some thumbs when we're ready for everybody to have their pencil lines in. And then we'll move on to the next stage. This is Stevens. Oh yeah, we're actually seeing real thumbs. Thank you. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to see real thumbs. I was expecting to see the emotion, uh, the reactions on there. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's got ready. Awesome stuff. Thank you guys. Right, well done. Thank you very much. Let's uh, let's get on with some. Uh, so you know, pencils are for losers. Let's get and grab your marker pens. I'm only joking, by the way, when I say pencils are for losers. It's something I like to say just to cause a bit of controversy. Pencils are great, but yeah, go and grab your marker pens because we're going to go and do some marker pen work now. Right now, I'm going to zoom in. For every single section, what we're going to do with this is I'm going to take you step by step through. So I'll draw a line. You follow that with that line. So don't panic if you're going to struggle with it. At certain points, I will pin, I will uh, signpost where you can kind of change things a little bit and make it a little bit more personal. Um, halfway through the drawing, we'll have a little look at everybody's artwork. We'll hold it up, have a little look. And at the end of the drawing, we'll add loads of details, really personalize it, and then have one more look right at the end of the session. Okay. And now don't forget, if you make any mistakes, mistakes are cool. I do believe that when you make mistakes, what that does is it uh, it puts your brain up a, up a gear. And you only get that gear, you only get that top gear when you make mistakes. So if you make a mistake, just plough through. Just try and think of what you can do to fix it. Okay, are we ready? Let's do it. We're going to put in some hair first. So we're going to take a, a, a two curves. One curve is going to go across the head like this. From here, on that circle, all the way to that side. Leaving a little gap. Don't get too close to the square. Keep it all inside. Next line. We're going to join those two the end of those two lines up but we're going to go the long way around so watch this we're going to jump up here follow the circle around and then hit that line again now one of my favorite techniques for drawing this is what i use all the time is a technique called double lining now double lining doesn't mean making your line twice as thick double lining means making your line twice as wonky and the reason i like wonky lines is because they are much easier to draw uh, and they look better as well. So don't be going after a smooth line. We're going after wonky lines today, okay? So just go over that one more time. We're double lining it. And you can see how wonky that line is. So we're getting some real fat bits in those lines. We get some real thin bits in those lines. And I'm going to be telling you to do that quite a lot. That double lining we're going to do quite a lot today, okay? Okay, let's go and do another bit of hair. So we're going to start here now. We're going to put a bit of hair down to the bottom of the square. So from there, just bring that line down. 
Make sure it hits the edge of the square. That's where we're aiming for. And then from here, just bring the line straight down to the edge of the square and join it all up. That's for one side of the hair. Let's go and double line that as well. Make it nice and wonky. Love a wonky line. Wonky lines are our friends. Got that in? Okay, let's go and work on the other side. First thing we're going to do on the other side, let's go and put an ear in on our character. So maybe about there. A little ear. Whilst we're in there, let's go and put the inner ear in. The inner ear is going to look like this. It's going to be a little line there and then a little curve to follow the outer ear. Once you've got the ear in, we're going to draw a line from the bottom of the ear. It's going to follow that circle all the way around until we hit the hair. So from the bottom of the ear there, all the way around, till we hit the hair. Don't forget to double line it all. Make those lines nice and wonky. Let's finish off the hair. Over on this side, we're going to start up here again. Watch this little line. This is, this is a nice little line. We're going to curve it in and then we're going to end up just outside the circle. Just outside the circle. The reason we're putting it just outside the circle is we want to make that piece of hair look like it's wrapped around the head. So let's go and do that headline now. That, that last little bit that's going to go from that piece of hair that we've just drawn all the way to the ear. And let's double line this bit as well. Nice wonky line. Right, let's finish off this last line from here. We're going to do a little bit of a jump and it's got to end up on the ear over here. Okay, so watch this from there, a little bit of a jump, end up on the ear. Double line it. And we've got a nice little piece of hair there just kind of tucked behind the character's ear. You see the thickness that we've got over on this side, this bit of hair over this side. We're going to repeat that over on the other side. Like that. Right. Let's go and throw some eyes in. For these eyes, we're not going to, we've got no pencil guidelines, going to go straight in with a pen. I want two great big circles. We've got that line in the middle to show where the symmetry point is. So I want two great big circles. Let's do one around about that size on that side. And let's do one on the other side. Double lining it nice and wonky. Doesn't matter if they're not perfect circles. Wonky eyes are cool. Doesn't matter if one is a little bit bigger than the other. Usually when I'm drawing eyes, I'll always draw one bigger than the other on purpose, just so that I haven't got the stress of trying to draw them exactly the same size. Up top, once you've done that, let's put some eyelashes in. I'd suggest five eyelashes. So one right in the middle, like that, and then two either side. One, two, one, two. Same on the other side, one right in the middle at the top there. You can go a bit longer with yours if you want. Two on either side, one, two, one, two. Now we're going to give our character a little bit of sass. So let's have the top eyelids just coming down a little bit. Top eyelids coming down a little bit. Already it looks like our character's got their eyes closed. You could leave it like that if you wanted to. But I want to hang a couple of pupils off the bottom here. So watch this, look, there you go, there's a little pupil. Little half circle just hanging off the bottom. Leave a little white dot in there for a reflection. 
as well. It always brings your character alive when you have that little reflection in there. Okay, let's keep it moving. We're now going to draw the most complicated nose you've ever drawn in your life. Okay, so really pay attention to this bit. Right in between the eyes, because that's where most noses are, we're going to draw a U shape. There we go, and we're finished. Let's go for a mouth next. Now imagine the shape of a sausage. That's what we're going to put in all the way across there, as big as you can. Not forgetting to double line it, go around it twice. Big sausage shape. Once you've got that sausage shape in there, let's give, uh, let's make it look like our character is really smiling by adding a little bit of a fold of skin either side. So there you go, little t little wrinkle there, little tiny wrinkle there. Once we've got those wrinkles in, we can put some teeth in. Now, teeth is something you can do your own thing with. You might just want to put one tooth in there. You might want to put one at the top, one at the bottom. Totally up to you. You can just put a tongue in there if you want. This is over to you. So the teeth in there, you can do whatever you want. If you're struggling for any inspiration for what kind of teeth to put in, then just copy what I'm doing, which is from the centre there. Using that pencil line we've got in the centre, let's do a bouncy line out. One, two three teeth same on the other side one two three teeth same for the bottom row starting from the center one two three one two three let's color the back of the mouth in black you might want to if you've got a big mouth you might want to throw in a little tongue in there At this stage, if you wanted to knock a tooth out, you could knock a tooth out if you wanted. To knock a tooth out, all you need to do is just colour it in. Adds a little bit more character to your character. Okay, let's finish off this head with a little neck. And in fact, let's finish off by putting a line all the way across here. And then these two little sections in here, we're going to colour those in black. This is the inside of the hair at the back of the head. So it's where all the shadows are. So we're going to colour it in black. If any of you guys are doing, uh, going to colour this at the end of the session, then uh, feel free to leave this bit and colour it in with a, a darker version of whatever hair colour you're using. But that's a great start. There you go, we're good to go now. Let's go and work on the body next. So let me show you where we're at at the moment. That's as far as we've got at the moment. We're going to work on the body next. Are you ready for that? So let's take it down to this next rectangle, this next square down the bottom here. Okay, you ready for this? First thing we're going to do, let's put in two lapels. So starting from that middle point, let's put in a big half circle, like a capital D falling on its front or a capital B falling on its front. You see how it's not going all the way to the edge? It's going about halfway to the edge of our character's width. Okay, so don't go all the way. Once you've done that bit, let's go and join those two together with another half circle just there. What we've got there is two lapels, and then this is going to be like the neckline of a little uh, pinafore that the character is wearing. Don't forget to double line all of these, make those lines nice and wonky. And then let's go and add that pinafore in. We need to be brave now that we're not going to use any guidelines, we're just going to stick in the middle here. So watch this, we're going to start at this point. We're going to finish at this point. We're going to do like a wonky wonky rectangle down the bottom here. 
See how it all stays well in, well inside that square. Keep it all nice and inside that square. Wonky rectangle, all the way down, all the way across, all the way up. We're going to do that shape again. Except this time, that shape is going to aim towards the corners. See these corners here? We're going to aim towards the corners, and as we go across, we're going to put a slight downwards curve on it as well, okay? So let's do that line again. Aim towards the corners, and then as you join it across there, just a slight downwards curve. It doesn't have to be massive, it's just going to make the, uh, the dress look a little bit rounder at the front. Double line all of that again. Going to double line everything we do today. Down the bottom here, let's go and put a little bouncy line. Remember those bouncy lines we did at drills? Little bouncy line, double line it if you need to. If it looks a little bit too neat, you want to go for that wonky effect. Go over it again. Okay, that's our dress done. We'll come back to, in fact, let's just quickly put some buttons in here. Some little buttons there, look. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that dress a little bit later and add some more details when we start personalising our artwork and making it a little bit more individual. Next thing I want us to do, though, is go and put the shoulders in of our character. So this time we're going to use this pencil line on the outside edge. Watch this. We'll do a little curve out and then across like that. There's our shoulder. Make sure you're touching that pencil line. Again, we're going to add a little frill. Now, as we add the bouncy line under there, I want you to try and put this first bounce kind of poking it out that way a little bit. Mainly because this character's arm is going to come out just here. So I want it to make it look like the frill is leaning on the arm. It's going to do the same on the other side. Or something similar. And we'll finish off this dress. Just a couple of little details. So just here, look, let's put a little line across there. Just above that bouncy line. Then the same down here. Let's put a little line in there as well. All we're doing there is we're just separating sections out on the dress. So if you do decide to colour this in, you've got different areas. That you're colouring in. Essentially all we're doing here is just making ourselves our own colouring in sheet. There you go, that's how we should be looking so far. That is pretty much our halfway point. So should we do it and have it uh, one more little look, our halfway point, little look at everybody's artwork. So what I want you to do, just quickly hold up your artwork again. Let me have a little, little look. But don't forget this is about, whilst you're holding your artwork up, have a little look at everybody else's. Okay, see what they're doing. See if they've done something different and you think, yeah, actually, I really like what they're doing. Then you can do your version of it. These are looking fantastic. Well done. Yeah, awesome stuff. Mrs. Stevens' class looking brilliant. Mr. Hudson's class, fantastic. I love the size of that head. That's a massive head. That's brilliant. <laughs> awesome stuff. Right, well done, you guys. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah, well done. That's spot on, that one. Really nice line work. Well done. Right, let's get back on with it. We're on the second half. We're on the home straight, so we're nearly finished. Okay. Let's. Uh, what we're going to do now? Let's go and put in some arms now. I hate drawing hands. I hate drawing hands, so I'm going to show you a real nice, easy way to draw hands. 
So grab your marker pen again. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to stay around this area because this is what we're doing. So the first easy way of drawing hands is not to bother drawing a hand. So what we're going to do on this side is we're going to put a little L shape. And then another little L shape on the inside. Just so it looks like our character's got it, got its arm behind its back. Double line that. So yeah, that's my first tip. Top tip for drawing hands. Don't bother drawing hands. Just put them so that they're kind of behind something or in a pocket, that kind of stuff. I'm hoping that what this is going to look like is that she's got her hands on her hips, showing a little bit more sass, a little bit of attitude. That's what I'm trying to get across on this piece in the best way possible. Right, over on the other side, let's go and put a hand in over on the other side. Now, the other hand is going to, or the other arm, and the hand is going to be holding on to a very small uh, nutcracker soldier. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to put a little indication of the arm just in there. A little tiny bit of the arm there. Then what we'll do is have the rest of the arm coming out like this. Okay, so try those three lines. I wanted to draw the whole arm in there so you could see what I was doing. So it just looks like the character is just holding, you know, got her elbow really tucked in, but holding something out as if to say, what is this? Now, let me show you how to draw a thumb. Once you've got this part of the arm out, and we've got this bit here is the wrist. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a thumb first, then we're going to draw the Nutcracker soldier behind it, okay? So watch this for the thumb. This is the thumb. That's all you're gonna do. Yeah, so it goes up, little kind of soft V shape, and then back again. Bring it back to there. Looks a bit unusual at the moment because we're missing half a hand, but that's cool because the rest of the hand is gonna be behind uh, the character. Uh, let me show you what we're going to draw now. So, are you ready for this? First thing, we're going to draw this Nutcracker character. We're going to draw it one stage at a time. First bit we've got to do is we've got to draw a square that's behind there. Let me show you where that square lives. So, it's about here. So, you see now how straight away that now looks like our character is holding something just looks like a piece of paper at the moment but it definitely looks like thumb at the front fingers around the back nice easy way of drawing a hand okay that's the cat that's the uh, soldier's body so let's go and put in some arms in fact what we're going to do three lines going top to bottom let's do one in the middle one there and one there Three lines top to bottom, to split that piece up. What we've got there is a body and some arms. We'll make those arms look a little bit more like arms by adding very simple hands. There we go. Very simple hands down there. And we'll make that body look more like a body by adding a very simple belt. Nice thick black line just there, look. Somewhere just there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Awesome. That bit was easy, yeah? Let's go and add the legs, because the legs are the next easiest bit to put in. Just there. Adding two legs, just on that middle section. So we've got those two arms sticking out a little bit. There are our legs. Let's colour in the bottom half of that to make it look like some boots. Then let's have a little bit of fun. We're going to go and put a head in this character. I mean, it's, it needs a head and a hat. Feel free to freestyle this little bit. If you want to go and do your own thing for the head and the hat of this Nutcracker character, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. The head is going to be a square. 
coming off the top. The face on that is just going to be a line and two dots because that's all I've got space to put in. If you've got a bit more space, then put in something else. If you haven't got any space, then just give it one eye. It'll be fine. Definitely needs a bit of hair though. Let's go a bit crazy on the hair. Little M shapes, capital M's on either side for the hair. And then for the hat, nice and easy with the hat as well. Again, another square. Maybe a little bit wider at the top. Maybe put a little thing at the top of it. There we go. That looks a little bit like a nutcracker. It's close enough anyway. Right, everybody got that in? That was next stage done. Did we double I don't think I double line these arms over here. I'm just gonna double line this. The line looks a little bit too neat for me. I don't like it. As soon as the line starts looking a bit too neat, it sort of stands out. There we go, that's the stage we're at at the moment. Let's go and throw in a couple of legs. So we're gonna draw some nice easy shoes in here. We're also gonna draw in uh, one sock pulled up, one sock that's fallen down. So let's, uh, let's do it. On the legs, we're gonna start at the bottom, we're gonna work our way up. Now, it, might all, it all looks a little bit confusing down here because there's loads of lines, but essentially this line here, this bit here, that is one of the legs. This bit here, that is one of the legs, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with some shoes at the bottom of those legs. So just here, look. And just here. That is the sole of the shoes. Nice flat sole. So just little rectangles. Doesn't go all the way to the edge, although it doesn't matter if it does go all the way to the edge. We just want it to be a platform for each leg. So put those soles in first. Then what we're gonna do is a capital B. Capital B that has fallen on its back. It's going to look a little bit like this. So from this side to the middle, all the way to the other side. Double line that. I'm gonna open these shoes up a little bit, put a little strap across the foot. So let's open them up with a line like this. And let's put a strap on with a line like that. Let's try and do that on both sides. So open them up, put on a strap, double lining as you're going along. So don't forget that bit in there, that is the foot, the sock that we can see in there. So if it does come to colouring in, you will need to, if you colour in the sock, you will need to colour in that bit in there to make sure it's the same colour, make it all look like it's attached. Right then, we're going to do one sock pulled up, one sock that's fallen down. Let's do the pulled up sock first because that's nice and easy. We've got our leg lines up here. What we're going to do is fairly high up, we're going to do a little tiny curve that's going to go all the way across just on the outside of this one to just on the outside of that one. Really important that the lines are just outside the pencil line, okay? Once you've got that line in, let's go up from there for the leg. So you can see how those little overlaps on either side, how important they're gonna be. Just little tiny overlaps, because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a line that comes from behind the leg, it's gonna go round that overlap, and it's gonna drop down into the foot. Okay, so starting on the leg, look, round the overlap, drop down into the foot.
Same kind of thing on the other side. Starting on the leg, here we go. Round the overlap. Drop down into the foot. See how easy that was to make it look like we've got a sock on our character. Let's go and double line all of these bits. Make them nice and wonky. Sometimes it's cool to see how far you can get with double lining, how, how wonky you can get with your lines before it starts to look a bit weird. Some artists I know have real fat lines. Go crazy with it. Okay, next sock is going to be kind of, is going to have fallen down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to do the same principle right at the top there. We're going to do a little curve. This time let's bring it down about, about halfway down. Little curve and again just outside the pencil lines. Only just, just a fraction. It's like a half a millimetre. Once you've done that, take those lines up the leg into the body, hitting the bottom of the dress there. Then we're going to have a little bit of fun with the ruffled sock. So let me show you how we're going to draw this bit. The same as before, we're going to start on the leg, we're going to jump around the uh, the uh, this bit. <laughs> we're going to go around that a little bit. But this time we're going to flick the pen, it's going to go in towards the leg. Let me show you how we're doing it. This. So let's do this bit. Look, it's going to go round and in like that. Same on the other side, round there and in. Now, really important when we start our next two lines that we always start just outside that pencil line because that pencil line tells you where the character's actual leg is. So we need to make sure the sock is always bigger than the leg. So let's go and do these lines again. Look, let's do one there, one there. See how they're starting outside the pencil line, coming back inside the pencil line. Let's keep on doing that as many times as you can until you get to the shoe. So let's do it one more time. Look, here we go. One there, one there. I can't fit any more in though. So for me, the next one will just be a bouncy line that goes into the shoe. Just there, just there. See how neat that was? Nice little trick for making a sock look all ruffled up. Let's go double line everything. We didn't double line anything there. It all looks a little bit too smooth. So let's double line. You don't have to double line everything. Just little bits in there every now and then. Awesome stuff. Let's finish off these legs. I wanted to make it look like maybe we've got some leg warmers on. So let's make it look like the character's got some tights on by putting some lines. In there. And again, if you want to personalize yours, maybe go and put a little pattern in the sock. The reason I'm not putting a pattern in the sock there is because drawing that same pattern in a ruffled up sock is going to be so difficult. So I'm going to leave it. Right, this is where you should be at. We should have a pretty much completely finished character. We're now going to spend five minutes personalizing it, adding some extra little details just to finish it all off. Now, feel free to copy me. There's going to be loads of bits that I'm going to do that are going to be really relevant and really important to add to your character. But also feel free to do your own thing as well. If you want to put uh, a, you know, a, a logo or something on the, on the pinafore, you can do that. If you want to put something in the hair, you can do that. Totally up to you what you do now. But feel free, if you're going to struggle, feel free to copy what I'm doing. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to work my way down. Are you ready for this? We're going to move a little bit faster. First thing we're going to do, let's put some more hair strands in. So from here, let's just flick the pen along to make it look like there's a bit more hair. Same down here as well. Just flick the pen. The reason we're flicking the pen is because it gives us that tapered 
end to it. So let's go and do that. A bit more texture in the hair. Maybe we want to put a few lines on the inside as well, look. Just to make that hair look a bit more realistic. If you've got space underneath your eyes, you might want to put some eyelashes underneath your eyes. If you haven't, maybe just put some little freckles. That's the head sorted. Let's move ourselves down a little bit into the body. One thing I really like doing with fabric is making it look more like fabric by adding in a dashed line. It looks like a bit of stitching. So let's go and throw that in. Again, this is all optional, this stuff. So if you don't want to do it, if you don't think it looks right, if it doesn't suit your character, then don't do it. But I think it looks rather neat. So go and throw that in as well. Also, with any kind of fabric, you might want to make it look more like fabric by adding in some little hashtags, quote marks. Don't think about it too much, just chuck a quote mark in. You know what a quote mark looks like. Just chuck a quote mark in. Excellent. Down the bottom here, let's go and add in a shadow. I want my character to look like it's standing on something rather than just floating in midair. So watch this. I'm going to put in a shadow. A little kind of capital C shape that's fallen on its back. A little ellipse kind of shape. There we go. Whilst we're at that stage, why not put a power line on? I love a power line. A power line is just where you go around the outside edge of the character, just make it all a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to quickly add a power line. Again, have a little look, see if you like how this is turning out. If you think, actually, I need, mine might need a power line, then go and put one on yours as well. It's a nice way of making your work stand out a little bit more. And we're only going around the outside edge. Don't get sucked into going around some of the lines on the inside. There are a couple of lines that we need to do on the inside, but technically they are the outside edge as well. I'll show you what I mean in a second. But yeah, a little power line all the way around. We're in the last five minutes now, so we'll have a little look at everyone's artwork in a second. There's our power line. The inside bits, I mean, are these. Look, so where where are the we can see the background, so we see through this arm. That's the bit I mean. There we go, just makes it all stand out. Last thing to do on your artwork. Now, usually when you sign your artwork, everyone does it in pencil on the back of their piece of artwork, really, really tiny, but I really want everybody to know that you've done this artwork. So find a space, draw your name as big as you can. Don't forget it's getting projected on the side of a castle. You wanna see your name really massive on the side of a castle, don't you? So go and draw it as big as you can anywhere on your piece of artwork. I'm gonna go and put mine here. There we go. There's my name, nice and big. And this has been done as part of the New Urban Era initiative to project on the castle. So let's do something for New Urban Era. And let's have one last look. We've got about two minutes left to have one last look at everybody's artwork. So if you've finished, if you're feeling confident, just hold it up. Even if you're not feeling confident, just own it. 
Excellent stuff. These looking great. It's good to see the big names. Yeah, go massive with those names. Yeah, double line the names. Make them nice and wonky. Make them drippy. That kind of stuff. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. Mr. Stevens is class. Love the black hair on those characters. Well done. Excellent eyelashes. Nice details in that one. Yeah. Awesome. Let's have a look at Mr. Hudson's class as well. Brilliant. Look at that. That one's got real sass, that character. Fantastic. Well done, everybody. Isabel is that Isla as well. Well done, Isla. That's good. GC, that's looking fantastic. Look at these ones at the front. They're looking great. Brilliant stuff. I love the fact that we've all drawn the same thing, but everybody's got something slightly different. Well done, Layla. That looks awesome. Excellent stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, line work on there is really good. Cool. Right, we're about to get cut off. So thank you very much for joining in. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to go to the Facebook pages if you want to go and do the other tutorials. And uh, yeah, send your artwork to New Urban Area and they will get it projected on the wall for you. Well done, everybody. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye.